Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. I'm really excited to be filming right now because today we are going to be focusing on my begonia greenhouse. This is the Acrobar greenhouse from Ikea. It's actually not really a greenhouse. It's more of just a display case, but I'll talk about that more later when we kind of talk about how I've set these up in here. But for this video, I want to, oh my goodness, we ha actually have a lot to do. Um, I'm gonna talk about how I've set this up, but I'm also going to repot these begonias, or at least that's my plan. There's a lot of really incredible begonias in here, so I'm really excited to be able to show you a closer look. I've been growing them since December, and they're doing fairly well. I literally haven't done anything with them, haven't repotted them, haven't, like all I'm doing is watering them and fertilizing them. Now to be clear, I don't really know a lot about terrarium begonia. I didn't have any experience before setting this up and growing these plants in here. So we're just gonna kind of learn together. But um, today I'm gonna be making a soil mix for them, which it's gonna be a little bit different than my normal mix. I've never made like a terrarium begonia specific mix. So we're gonna give that a go. Um, try to get these repotted. Not all of these in here even specifically need to be in really high humidity, like the Milano Bellata, so I might take that one out. We're just gonna kind of see how it goes um, and figure out this like repotting situation together. Not all of these are doing amazing, but most of them are doing quite well. Like I'm fairly impressed. And this whole like setup has been very low maintenance. Like I said, I don't have to water them very often or anything, probably only once every two weeks. And I feel like a lot of people get intimidated when they hear terrarium begonia or they see that something's a terrarium begonia because they think that it's gonna be really high, ma high maintenance, but it's actually the opposite. Um, I have to like deal with these way less often than I have to my plants out like outside of a greenhouse setup. So yeah, I've been loving how just like chill <laughs> this whole situation is. Um, but I think I'm actually gonna move this onto the table so that we have more access to it and can work easier. Um, so I'm gonna get all set up and then we'll take a look at some of these plants. And I'll also explain how I've set this up. I haven't done anything fancy, honestly. It's very DIY, but so far it's been um, functioning just fine. Okay, so here it is. Obviously I had to unplug the light and it's a good thing that I've pulled this out so that I can clean it off because it's super dirty. And this is because there was a catastrophe the other day. I was looking out the window and talking and I bumped one of my string of hearts, uh, which really needed to be watered. It was the regular string of hearts, which is no longer there anymore for this reason. Um, but I guess it was really dry. So when I moved it, it pulled the whole plant down. It came crashing down on top of this terrarium. It took out like five plants around this area. I had to take off a whole bunch of leaves on my Michelitziana that it broke off. It was a whole big thing and there's still like dirt. This was a week ago and it's, there's still just, most of the mess got cleaned up, but there's still some mess. And obviously there's like some soil on here and stuff that needs to be cleaned from that as well as just dust, dust. But I just wanted to give you a brief overview of this setup and how I've tried to weather strip this as best that I can. I find this K display case very difficult to hold humidity. It is not like the Millsbow Wide or the Millsbow Tall, which are both things that I find relatively easy to um, for them to hold in humidity. Like you just do some simple weather stripping and then it's not too bad. But this one, um, I had to add moss in the bottom and it was a whole thing. So I guess I'll just go from top to bottom what I've done here. So I have just one Barina light in here. Apparently a lot of these begonia actually don't need super high light. Um, so I just have the one single light in there and honestly they seem to be really happy with it. So I have that plugged into a timer, uh, like an outlet timer there. So it just turns on automatically every day. This is on for about oh let me think about 12 or 13 hours a day and then for the weather stripping i have a combination of a couple of different types of weather stripping so i have just the like regular kind of flap here let me open this up the kind of flap version of that's not a technical term um the same type of weather stripping i have in my mills bows just a sec and it also does not like to stay on so i think maybe i'll glue this on next time i put it on 
Um, like I said, this is a very just like <laughs> kind of like jimmied situation. Like this is not um, the most amazing setup, but it's actually worked really well for me so far. So, you know, it's all good. Um, so I have this like this flappy <laughs> type of weather stripping around this part at the top and then where the lid closes up here. And that seals in both this part and then this part when it's closed. I started off with just that weather stripping on here and then I also tried to fill in the gaps a little bit with just random stuff that I had lying around. Um, but that was not enough. So I ended up ordering this foam weather stripping here for the gap when the door is closed. I don't know if you'll be able to see. I'll link everything I use down below, but this is the... Wait, you might be able to see better on the other side because the lighting. Yes, there we go. So this foam weather stripping I have along the sides where the door, where there's normally a gap, because um, the door doesn't sit like exactly flush. So that's to fill in a bit of the gap. And then I also have that. There's quite a gap on the, like where this sits into, and this whole thing can be lifted off. It's two pieces. The tray on the bottom is one piece, and then you can lift this whole part off, which we'll do in a second. But I have the foam weather stripping. It actually fits pretty perfectly in there. And then I also have the same thing on the back, the foam weather stripping. Um, but on top of the foam weather stripping, I've put some electrical tape. I guess we'll have to take this off anyways to get the terrarium off. But um, yeah, you can see the foams in there. I literally was just doing everything that I could think of to make this hold in some humidity. You can see it's not perfect. Like there is gaps on the side that I could have filled, but I just haven't yet. Oh, and I did also put a black cord cover on there just to make the light like blend in a little bit more. It looks a lot nicer than having the white cord since this is obviously the black cabinet. So I did that. You could see this is in the 80s. It's open now, so it's probably gone down a little bit, but um, it holds humidity. Oh, this is in Fahrenheit. That's interesting. It holds, is this broken? Why is... Oh, it's probably because I'm holding it. I was like, wait a second. That should go down now. If it doesn't, then why is it still going up? Oh no, it's going down now. Okay, okay, here we go. I was like, no, is this thing busted? Okay, it's fine. So even with all of that weather stripping that I put on here, I was, I, I was at my wit's end. I was getting frustrated. I was like, why is this thing not going above like 50 or 60%? It was, I don't think it was going above 60 with all of that. So I ended up just throwing some sphagnum moss in here and that made a huge difference. That's what made the humidity go up to the 80s and even sometimes 90s. Um, so that's was basically like the hack that made this setup really work for me. And then I also just did little things like um, when the lid is closed, I secure it with these little pieces of electrical tape, just like that, just to make sure it like stays sitting tight. Just like anything I could think of to make this more efficient, I did. So is this the most clean setup in the world? No, but like I said, it's been working well for me, so I'm happy with it. So I'm gonna take this top off and we're gonna take the begonias out so that we can repot them. I don't know if I'm gonna do all of them. I feel like that would take so long, but we'll see how many we can get through. Okay, so like I said, this whole top portion comes off, so I'm gonna carefully, oh my gosh, I think it's stuck. Oh, there we go. Oh shoot, I forgot to take the tape off the back. <laughs> Duh. Okay. Peel that off. What, Ollie Bear? Oh, you hear the men outside, honey? It's actually kind of a shame that I'm gonna disrupt these because I feel like they all have just like settled in and they look nice the way that they're set up and everything, but um, I just I just feel like they need a repot. So that's what we're gonna do. And I guess I'm just going to, oh my goodness, how am I even gonna do this? They're so pretty. A lot of them are in flower too, um, which we'll get a closer look at these later. A lot of these I think I'm going to keep in the same cup, but just kind of like move them up so that their roots have more space so that I can add more substrate in. A lot of these are no drainage too. 
And this is another thing, I don't have any fans in this um, setup, so I do try to air it out every once in a while. But because there is no fans, I can see mold in some of these, so that's not going to be surprising to find. And then there's also fungus gnats, which I kind of have fungus gnats all around right now, just since spring. Maybe we'll start by making my potting mix for them. I, I like don't even know where to start, but that seems like a logical place. So I'm just going to be doing a simple mix for these, for the base of it. I'm going to be using my, um, what's it called, Pro Mix uh, HP Mycorrhizae soil, which actually has some perlite in it already. It's actually really nice and fluffy. I love this soil. I use it as the base to my simple, just like DIY potting mix as well. So I guess I'm just going to put, I don't know, a few scoops of that. Do four scoops. And then I'm going to add just a little bit more perlite. I don't think it needs much, but I'm just going to add, yeah, just a little bit. Mix that up and see how it's looking. Okay, and then I'm gonna be adding something that I don't use very often. In fact, I, I never use it, and that is vermiculite. Because I've heard that people say vermiculite is great to add in a mix for terrarium begonia. And to be honest with you, I don't even know much about it or why. I think it's something to do with the way it retains moisture. Um, but I'll put on screen if I can find some more information about it, if anybody's curious. But like I said, it's just not something that I use. So I'm not, this is like basically me experimenting with it for the first time. So we're just gonna add some of that in. It's really pretty because it's like sparkly. It just seems to be something that people always use for begonias. So I'm just copying, okay. Vermiculite is actually something that I keep hearing about in outdoor gardening. Um, people talking about vermiculite and I'm like, oh, I didn't know it was such a big thing for like outdoor gardening. So I'll have to do my research on vermiculite. Okay, so that mix is looking really good. If you can see, it's like nice and um, like there's still lots of chunkiness. I'm not really chunkiness, but it's fluffy, I guess, is the word that I would use for it. And the all of the components are really small and fine, so it'll be perfect because obviously these are smaller plants that we're working with. So this is looking really good to me. I'm just gonna grab the begonias that I want to get repotted. I might even trim some of these, take some propagations. Oh my gosh, there is, I just put my tea here like two minutes ago and there's already a fungus gnat floating in it. I'm like, can we not? Okay, so the first one that I'm gonna grab is my, oh yeah, and what I was gonna say at the beginning of this video is that most of these stunning begonias are from Chlorophylls. Amanda, I'll link her um, Instagram, YouTube, shop. She's incredible. She's so knowledgeable about begonias, pinguicula, and therium. She has a really cool collection um, and she sells a lot of these plants as well. I think in Canada and the US. So um, I'll link all of her information, but she sent me just the most incredible package that contained all of these begonias. Um, and I'm just thinking about that right now because this is the only one that did not come from her. This one I already had, but I think all of these other ones came from Amanda. So um, yeah, I'll have all her info linked below. And I was just so blown away. I couldn't believe how generous the package I received from her was. I feel like we need a potting mat. These plants are so small that I honestly feel like I could get you guys on my small tripods that you can get a little bit closer. Okay, wow, that's nice. That's better. Okay, so this first one is my Begonia Draco Pelta. Now I've had this for a couple of years, but I'm, I'm gonna try not to talk too much about them, by the way, um, because I'm gonna be doing like a whole updated Begonia collection later this year, but um, Yes, my Begonia Draco Pelta, I already had it and it really wasn't looking great, but ever since I put it in that environment, it has started growing. These like darker leaves are the new ones. It started, maybe the lighting, there we go. The darker leaves are the new healthy ones and it's also flowering and everything. So it's been really happy, but I do have a lot of old foliage that I'm gonna try to remove. Um, 
So let's get rid of some of this weird um, dead leaves. This is such a cool begonia. I love the like weird bumpy texture of it. It's similar to Milano Bellata, but it's not like pointy. It's just like, it's like warty. It's just a weird cool one. And I love the name of it as well, Draco Pelta. Like that's so cool. It seems that more people are getting interested in begonias um, or maybe I'm just a Lulu, but it feels like more people are like opening up to begonias and getting interested, which I personally find so exciting because I would love to create more begonia content. Um, so yeah, <laughs> shout out to everyone who's trying out begonias. Okay. That's not bad. Now I just want to try to see, like, this is the thing with terrarium begonia. I really don't know how to tell if they need to be repotted or not, but this has been in this substrate for years. So I think I'm just going to, oh my gosh, I'm breaking off leaves. I think I'm just going to go ahead and at least change out the medium. I don't know if I necessarily need to size up the container, but I'm at least going to change out the medium. I'm gonna use a fork to kind of wedge him out. This is something that I learned to do with my veggie seedlings. <laughs> it's kind of fun like um, learning about outdoor gardening because I'm getting more ideas for things that I can transfer over to houseplants that I had just never thought of before. That, that made it so much easier to pull this guy out. Now, oh, there's like a bundle of sphagnum in the middle, okay. Are these roots? Oh my gosh. It's hard to even tell like what, where are the roots? Hello? There has to be roots in here somewhere. They're obviously gonna be like fine and small, but, oh, there's one, okay. I mean, it doesn't look like the most robust root system. I will say that much. Well, like I said, I'm gonna change out the medium. I don't wanna disturb him too much. I think I'm just gonna like, I've knocked off most of the excess and then I think I'm just going to um, brush this to the side. It looks like this was in like an Aeroid mix before, which now I feel like I have a better idea of what type of mix these begonias actually need. So I'm just going to that up a little bit it'll be interesting to see if he's any happier in this different mix Let's put that in and then just back fill he's kind of crazy honestly i could probably take cuttings like especially of this one it's just like trailing off i'll probably cut that off honestly and these aren't dry or anything so I'll be able to take cuttings because I don't like taking cuttings of things that are thirsty. But since these were well hydrated, it's perfect. I actually think that I'm going to do Osmo Coat for these as well. I think, I think, I think. Okay, let's get them all settled first and then I'll deal with that after. Also have my little snippers for any small little things that need to be cut off. Oops, I got these little tiny shears as a bonus from potting mat that I ordered for my tomato seeds. And they're so perfect for my houseplants, like getting into little areas. And they're just like a bonus item. So that was pretty sweet. I have so many pairs of shears, but I feel like I have a different purpose. Like, I feel like I, I genuinely need all of the options that I have, which I probably don't, but it just I just like having mul multiple of them. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe I'll decide at the end if I'm gonna chop them because I'll see like how well they fit back in this terrarium because I feel like space is definitely gonna become an issue soon, especially with like height because the tallest one is almost at the top of the um, the like greenhouse thing already. Okay, so Begonia Draco Pelta, all done with his repaws, looking stunning. Looking like he needs a haircut as well. That part does look really crazy. <laughs> I'm just gonna set him aside. 
Okay, next we have this little guy right here, which I honestly thought this was going to croak, but it looks like it's still going, so... I don't even know if I should disturb it, but it did have mold, so I think maybe I will repot it. Gosh, I don't know. I don't know. This is Begonia Berkeleyi Dark. These look really cool when they get bigger, like incredible, so I would like for it to survive, but let's just pull it out and... People are probably yelling at me not to disturb it, but should I? Should I disturb it? Yeah, I feel like I want to. I don't like that mold. I'm just gonna like try not, not to bother him very much. I'll just boop. There we go. And then I'm just gonna gently... Then, then this also gives me an opportunity to like check out the roots and everything, so... Yeah, it definitely smells moldy too. Oh, there's a baby leaf coming in. Good, good, good. Um, I need to remember to open up that. If I could open it up like just every morning or something to get some airflow in there. Okay, I see the roots. They're so fine. I honestly can't tell if they're healthy or not. I'm assuming they are since there's a new leaf coming in, but yeah, who knows? Who knows? Okay gonna set him here this, this is like the tiniest plant like for me to be working with um and then i'm just gonna get all of the excess out of here then let's fill this up i want it to be pretty close to the top I don't like them growing against the side of the container. That's perfect. Perfect. And then I'm just going to backfill. Sorry, you can hardly see this one. It's just so teeny tiny. Oh my gosh. There we go. I don't want to cover that new leaf either. Okay. He is all potted up there. <laughs> we'll see if he... How he does. Send prayers. Okay, so yeah, these smaller ones are honestly the ones that have struggled the most, but I think that they're doing okay. Like, they could be worse. They could be worse, I feel. And they've been hanging on since December. So, I mean, hopefully we'll turn a corner soon, but <laughs> we're just, yeah, we'll see. So this one is Begonia Roseopuncta, which is such a cutie with the pink. I really, really love it. But yeah, as you can see, she has not been the happiest. Um, this leaf is actually almost entirely, it probably could just be cut off, honestly. Um, and maybe, it looks like she could honestly use a repot maybe. I don't know if you can see all the roots kind of coming out of there. So let me remove her and then we'll see. We'll see what we're working with because I could upgrade her. Um, there we go. Yeah, I honestly think I'm going to upgrade her in pot size. I think I'm going to remove this leaf because I just can't help myself. It's just going to fall off and get moldy if I leave it. Um, oh my gosh, this little cutie with just one leaf. I can't with that. It's so cute. Um, uh, okay, let me find a container for her. I've got a few extra containers that I'll bring over here. And I think that this square one, this is actually the same one that I have the Draco Pelta in. So we'll use this one. I mean, it's kind of big, but I think it'll be fine. Well, actually, you know what? I might have one of my houseplant essentials, just small ones. Okay, this is even better. This is actually the perfect size for her. This is from Houseplant Essentials. It's basically like a smaller one of these. So let's get her into here. Boop. <laughs> then we can cover up some of these roots. So it'll be good. Okay, so she is all resituated in there i honestly have a good feeling about that i think she's gonna be happier oh my gosh next we have this guy this one is so funky this is begonia scapagera or scapagera i don't know this is um the name right there but it is just so unique 
Like these leaves are so interesting. They're like teardrop shaped leaves. Really, really cool. So this one actually looks healthy. I'm trying to see, is there any roots sticking out or anything? I honestly think that this one is fine for a little while longer. Like it doesn't look like it's dying for a repot or anything. So I'm just gonna leave it. I mean, I think I feel like I can maybe push another month or two with this one in here. So I'm just gonna roll with that. Okay, oh my goodness. This one is gorgeous, but it looks unhappy. This is Begonia Dark No ID. Um, as you can see, it has a stunning dark foliage. Oh my goodness, the like shine to it is so beautiful, but I'm having problems with it melting. As you can see on some of these leaves, um, which I've had problems with the Begonia, Terrarium Begonia melting in the past, specifically with my uh, Darth Vaderiana when I had a hybrid of that and I actually had the like purebred one but um, that one promptly croaked on me but it was basically doing the same thing as this I don't know if that's a humidity humidity issue maybe this needs more humidity than the terrarium is offering some of these are ideally like some terrarium begonias need almost a hundred percent humidity since this is a no ID I don't know um, what it needs, but to me, it looks like it's maybe having a humidity issue. Um, so I need to decide if I wanna move this into a different setup or if I wanna keep it in here. I think I might move it into a cloche. Um, I think I have a cloche that might work for this. So I'm just gonna top it up with, a, it doesn't look like it needs a repot or anything, but I'm just gonna top it up with a little bit of this fresh soil. It does have new leaves coming in, so it's not like dying or anything. It just looks like it's having problems with melting. This is kind of the, like, with these begonias that need more like 90 plus percent humidity, I kind of, I find it hard to balance that because you can put a cloche on and get like basically 100% humidity, but then you also don't have any airflow and you get mold. So it's like, how do you solve, like unless you have a, a, a big terrarium, like an actual setup with like a fan and everything, I don't know how you really get around that, but I just do the best that I can, but I'll probably put that in a cloche. So I'm gonna set it off to the side. All right, ooh, this is the moldy one. So this is Begonia Muna and it's so stunning. Like the foliage on this is absolutely incredible. I can't even, I know that the camera just will not do it justice, but it has this obviously like galactic, like constellation kind of foliage, hence the name Muna. Uh, it's so stunning, but not only is the like pattern pretty, it also, it's almost like velvety looking. Like it's just the sheen on it is so, so gorgeous it's kind of hard awkward to show because this cup is so tall um but yeah it's a really pretty begonia mine's in bloom as well if you look at the flowers there i love that begonias bloom y'all know that i love my blooming plants so begonias are just so up my alley um i originally just fell in love with them because of the foliage but the fact that they flower is just incredible i'm gonna have to lift this up a little bit for this one so I need to get this out of here. Um, there's definitely some dead foliage that needs to be removed. I'm gonna squeeze the sides. There we go. Oop. Might wash that one out because it, whoop, oh my gosh, it does have a lot of mold. So I have this whole like dead one right here that I'm just gonna remove. This begonia actually seemed like it was really suffering when like after it came into my care, I was like, oh shoot. And I was actually scared it was gonna croak, but it just completely bounced back. So I'm really happy about that. Yeah, there's like leaves that um, fell off and then started molding down here which was the problem with me leaving it, them in these cups for so long because it was way down here. So I couldn't really reach in e easily to remove like 
debris like that. This one, you can actually see the root system though. Looks really good. So thank goodness for that. I might take a cutting of this one. It's getting kind of tall. I might do that. I do like to take cuttings of my begonias. I do, I do. Then it encourages branching and stuff. Okay, I'm gonna give this a quick rinse or a scrub, I guess. Okay. I'm gonna add some soil in. Now pop her in. Okay, she's got a lot more room in here now to root out. And I think I am gonna take a cutting because she's just like top heavy now. So got that little cutting. Unfortunately took the bloom with me, but that's okay. That's okay. It's so cute. I wonder if it would root if I just like stuck it back in. I wonder if it would. Do y'all think it would? Do y'all think it would? You can also propagate begonia by leaf, which is really cool. So I'm probably just gonna throw this into my prop box just for funsies. Honestly, I should probably cut the blooms off of this, but I kind of can't bring myself to cut them off because <laughs> they're so cute. Okay, so that's how she's looking now. Oh my goodness, I just love her so much. Okay, so next we actually have a begonia that was my biggest wish list begonia for a long, long time. And that is Miss Begonia Milano Bellotta. I still can't believe I have this. This is just like the coolest thing ever. Obviously it has these like spikes. They're not sharp or anything. It's actually quite soft. Um, and it's so fuzzy, which is one thing that I didn't really know about the Milano Bellotta. Like it is so fuzzy and hairy. Like I was not expecting, um, like look at the petiole. Look at that, that is crazy. The new, this new leaf, like look at that. It looks like a tuft. It is so, so cool. So yeah, safe to say I'm fully obsessed with this begonia and it's been growing super well lately. These are all new leaves up here. Um, so from what I've heard about this plant, it can actually grow in room humidity, um, which my humidity, it's reading at 66% right now. So obviously that's pretty good. Um, it has been rainy out, so that's probably why. But yeah, I think I might try this in room humidity. I don't know. Let's get it out of here because I think it definitely needs a repot and it's like squished in here. There we go. Oh, wow. Definitely has a robust root system. I've never seen these flowering. Do these flower readily? Does anybody know? Oh my gosh, I just like, are you kidding me? This is the coolest. Like, I'm just, I'm fully obsessed with this plant. Um, okay, so I'm gonna remove any dead leaves. There's lots of just like tiny leaves down here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I feel like I might need to remove some of these leaves down here because they're just gonna get buried. Or maybe I can plant it like, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I'm definitely gonna need a bigger container to put this in. I mean, could it go in here? I suppose, but honestly, even a little bit bigger would be good. Let me go take a look. 
I think I'm actually going to put it into this pot. This is a five inch houseplant essentials pot. Um, yeah, I honestly think that this is what it needs because it has a really full root system. So let's go ahead and fill this up a bit. And then, yeah, I think I am going to have to just remove, I mean, I don't know. It's just putting those leaves out down there and mm, I don't know what to do about that. Because it looks like it's just going to keep continuing to push. Maybe I'll plant it kind of sideways. Gosh, I don't know. Hmm. I'm also going to need to make up some more potting mix here. Okay, I guess I'll just do it like that. He sent me downtown lights. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Oh my goodness, what an upgrade for this one, hey? It looks remarkable. Look at that. I just, now that this plant is gonna be released from this terrarium, I'm probably never gonna shut up about it because I'm gonna put this somewhere where it's going to be very visible all the time because I need to stare at it every day. <laughs> okay, that's actually good that I'm taking that one out because it's gonna free up more space. Okay, so this one, oh my gosh, honestly, oh shoot, it was overwatered. oh shoot, oh no, I think I've killed one of the coolest ones, you guys, I think I've killed one of the coolest ones, oh dear, this is depressing, this was Begonia Sarawak. If you can believe it. Oh my gosh, I did not realize that it had all that water in there. It's been like that all week. Oh dear. This is what my sad Begonia Sarawak looks like. Honestly, I'll probably buy another one from her to replace it if this one doesn't make it. But I am going to cut this off. Yeah, I don't even know if this is going to be salvageable through propagation. I mean, there's a chance that this is going to sprout up again, like the base of it. Because the nice thing about begonias is that they often will come back. But with it being this overwatered, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, shoot. This is the thing because it was just kind of snuck underneath the other ones. Um that I didn't notice it was in this state. I'm gonna pop these into a propagation box even though I'm like pretty sure they are croaked. As in not gonna come back to life, but you never know. You never know. So we're gonna keep it. <laughs> we're gonna keep these pieces and we're gonna see what happens. Hmm. Mm, it's depressing. Okay. I am just going to top this up with a little bit of this mix. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated. Okay. I think I'm going to do a few... Maybe I won't do them off camera, but maybe I'll just speed this footage up and put some music over it so y'all can just enjoy if you want to um, just relax while I repot a bunch of these and then I'll meet you back here because we still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left. So we'll be here all day if I go through each of them like this. Um, so I'm just gonna fly through these, so enjoy.
Conversation more than that. 
Okay, so this is looking very chaotic at the minute. I have so many begonias all on this table. You can't even see all of them. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and add some Osmocote into all of these. And then I'm gonna water them through. Well, not most of these are actually no drainage. So just not through, but I'm gonna add water to them. Um, and then I didn't really even consider that with the Osmocote and the no drainage. It should be fine. I just won't put too much. Um, and then I'm going to wipe down the terrarium. I just um, wiped down the shelf where the, um, I, don't, I keep calling it a terrarium. I know it's not really a terrarium where the greenhouse thing sits. So that's all clean. Yeah, once they're all watered, we can basically just put them back, make them look cute. I'm actually gonna keep be keeping two of them out. So it's gonna be a little bit less crowded, which might be nice. We're gonna be keeping the Milano Bellata out, like I said. Um, I was just showing my boyfriend this and he was so shook. Like, it's just the coolest plant ever. Um, I think I might propagate, have, do a little propagation so that he can have one in his office too um, another day. And then I'm also going to be moving this gal out. This is my beautiful Begonia Malacosticta. I love her so much. I wish that the lighting was... There we go. Um, my begonia malacosticta oh my gosh she's just stunning like this one is just one of my absolute favorites it's so gorgeous so i didn't i could not bring myself to chop her so she's quite tall as you can see i can't believe how big she's gotten i've added a stake and i'm going to be moving this into my i think millsbo tall greenhouse honestly she might be able to live in just room humidity like i feel like she might be able to tolerate that she seems very hardy if you have one let me know how you grow yours but i just have a feeling that she might be able to be acclimated down to room humidity but i'm not going to do it right now i'm going to stick her in the cabinet but those are the two that are going to be staying out and all the other ones are going to go back in so i'm just going to go ahead add the osmo coat and then we'll get them all situated Okay, so I think I'm going to pop this back up here and put it all together again because I feel like it's going to be easier to kind of situate the plants in there. So, oh, I also had a thought. I had a thought. I was low-key wondering if I should replace the moss with Lekka. But I feel like... Oh, I don't know if I should do that or not. I don't know. Let, let me know. Do you think I should put Lekka in here instead of the moss? I think it would look cleaner. Should I just do it? Maybe I'll just do it. Maybe we'll try it out. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Change of plans here. Okay, so I'll start with that and then I'll see how much more I need when I kind of get all the plants in here because obviously I'm gonna have to move this around. I do think that this is gonna look a lot nicer. I'm gonna set them up to look pretty similar. I'm gonna put them in the same spots and everything, most of them. 
Oh yeah, shoot. I want to put the top on. Okay, I just put a little bit water for now and we'll see how we go. I also moved the lights because I just wasn't comfortable with the cord going out the bottom with when there's like water in here, even though it was wet before, I guess I didn't really think about it. Um, but I'm just gonna have it going out at the top like that and then I'll have the cord cover on the outside. I'll have to like clip it there or something, maybe put a command hook on here eventually. But I already feel like this looks a lot better and I feel like the plants stand out a lot more too, especially now that they're repotted. And um, yeah, I just think that it's looking really good so far. So I'm gonna turn the light on and we'll see how it's looking with, with some light. Oh my gosh, stunning, stunning. I do kind of miss having the malacosticta in here already. So I think I'll have to take a cutting of that one and then add a little baby plant of it back in here in the future. But otherwise I am so thrilled with this. And there's even a little bit of room for these to grow or for me to add, you know, another one or two in the future. Um, again, the Sarawak is in the prop box and I'm putting this guy, this, um, this cross, this hybrid into a cloche because this is the one that is trying to melt on me so i'm gonna try that and yeah so this is what what it's looking like i'm actually super super happy with how this turned out the only thing is i'm not going to be able to put my um hygrometer i don't want to put it on top of the wet leca so i'm gonna have to probably um, mount that in here somewhere because I do like to keep an eye on the humidity. It helps me know when these need to be watered as well. When the humidity drops, I'm like, oh, okay, they must be dried out and thirsty. I think for now, sorry about all the background noise. I think for now I'm going to mount this or not mount this. I'm just going to like set it on top of one of the pots. Um, but I think I'm one going to buy a smaller one of these for in here. Something that's a little bit more nicer to look at and then i can just i don't have one in my ambient right now and i would like to so i'll probably use this one for just like keeping an eye on my room humidity and temperature and everything and then i'm gonna get a smaller one that i can pop in here so yeah I'll, i'm gonna leave it out for now so that i can take some photos of this but i will end up just probably sneaking it just right back here temporarily Okay, so I think that that's it for this video. I feel like I was not prepared for what an undertaking this was going to be to get them all repotted, but I'm so happy that we did all of this and got it all done. I feel like this just, it looks great. They're all refreshed and yeah, I'm just, I'm so happy to be able to talk about this a little bit more in a video because I set this up, you know, a few months ago now. I haven't talked a ton about the setup or the plants or anything. So I'm so happy that I was able to do that in this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you have any questions, pop them down below in the comments and I will get back to you. Um, like I said, I am a beginner with all of these plants and with this, it's all just very experimental. I do feel like it's going well so far, but it is very experimental. So just keep that in mind. I do not have many of the answers. Um, I'll link everything that I used to the best of my abilities in the description box. 
but yeah thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate you watching all my videos it just it means so much i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one bye, bye.